Welcome back to the Just As We Are podcast. I am your host, Katrina Lully, and today's episode is with a good, beautiful soul that I got to meet back in October at the Mommy Millionaire Live event. I've kind of known who Laura Muse was. I've seen her around. Um, she's a part of the, one of the same network marketing companies that I am, and I have always been drawn to her for some reason. I've just seen this beautiful woman who is confident and sharing light and love with the world. And I knew that I had to have her on my podcast, especially after I met her in October, because she is doing such good, beautiful, big things. Laura is a fun, sarcastic, and tenacious wellness and network marketing professional, mindset expert, and business coach with a recognized track record of success. As a single mom of two, Laura understands firsthand the struggle to maintain a bountiful home life, soul life, and business life. From drug abuse to food stamps to divorce, Laura turned her pain into positivity and was able to completely change the course of her life by utilizing mindset development and visualizing the bright future. Laura has helped countless women tap into their shame points and help them unlock the life they desire. And you guys are going to just love this episode today. We talk about that shame and where did she think it came from from her? Where does it stem from? Um, you know, what are what has she done to overcome that shame thinking? And one of her biggest accomplishments or rather points for her is, you know, she didn't share there was a side of her that she didn't share for a while that she was ashamed about, even as she was growing this network marketing business. And when she opened up and shared this side of her, it totally transformed her entire life and it transformed her business. And, you know, she came on and she was willing to share that dark story of that with me. And I'm just so grateful for it. You guys get out your pens and papers, really tune into this episode You know, I just know she's making huge impacts and changes on the world, and I really am so excited that I get the pleasure of having her on this show and sharing her story with you. Welcome to the Just As We Are podcast. I'm Katrina Lelly, a wife, mom in recovery, certified life and transformation strategist, community cultivator, lover of people, and student of life. Each week, I'll bring you love, inspiration, share the harder things people are afraid to talk about, and guests who are willing to shine their light for you. I give you self-care practices and mindset tips to help you shatter the negative stories you tell yourself. Now is the time to step into the beautiful, loved, whole woman you already are. Let's walk this journey together. Hi, welcome back to the Just As We Are podcast. Thank you so much, Laura, for joining me today. I am super excited to have a conversation with you and um, for people to just get to know who you are because I was drawn to you at Mommy Millionaire Live and you know, you have such a beautiful heart. I saw that right away. And you definitely, I can see you have a love for serving people. And so I'm so glad that you're here. Well, thanks for having me. I'm excited to be on your show. Thank you. So just tell everybody a little bit about yourself. Um, Okay. So basically I am a single mama and um, I always like to say that I say that from an empowered place and not a victim place because I really, um, you know, I have a hard time with people using single mom as an excuse to, you know, kind of not show up for themselves in a powerful way. So even though um, I'm a single mom, that doesn't mean that I'm not capable of doing things that I want to do. And, you know, I'm not just relying on everything to come my way easily. So I'm a single mom of two kiddos. I live in just outside of Denver, Colorado. I am actually from LA originally. So true California girl. Um, That's why I have palm trees and oceans in my (laughs) background on the Zoom call right now, because even though we are recording this during quarantine, you know, I got to manifest the beach into my life somehow. 
Um, let's see what else I have had quite a bit of success with network marketing. And I also um, have started doing over the past year and a half doing some mindset coaching and lifestyle coaching with people and um, speaking at events and things like that. I love that. What took you from LA to Colorado? Um, so that was 13 years ago now. And, um, I grew up in LA and my whole family decided that we kind of wanted to get out of California. And so we took this, uh, poll on a website called findyourspot.com, which is no longer there, unfortunately, but it asked a bunch of questions about your lifestyle and like city, country, you know, weather, all this stuff. And then it basically gave you a, like a list of places that you might want to live. And Colorado was on everyone's list. And for various reasons, it seemed like a good idea. So we um, took a trip out here and um, decided that we really did love the feel of Colorado. And so 13 years ago, we all moved out here, like 15 of us, you know, my parents, my sisters, my grandma, my uncles, we just all relocated out here. It was basically as random as that. (laughs) (laughs) That's awesome. That's so cool. (laughs) I know. Yeah. Thank goodness we all came though, for sure. Because now we've all had babies and things over the 13 years. So, you know, thank God we're all together in the same state. Yeah. And for your whole family to actually move out there, not like just you and a couple of your people. So it's so interesting. Like usually people go for jobs or, you know, relationship or other types of reasons. But um, I love that. That's so cool. Yeah. We made the decision. Then we made it work. That's awesome. That's so fun. (laughs) I love that. Uh, So you mentioned, you know, you're a single mom and you use that to empower yourself rather than to use it as a limitation. And I thought that was so beautifully said. And were you, did you always feel that way? Have you always had that mindset? Well, I mean, I haven't always been a single mom. So um, I really, it wasn't relatable to me until, you know, I was divorced. uh, What is it? Four or five years ago. And so at that point, it became a relatable term to my life. Um, Before, when I was married and, you know, working with single moms and helping them kind of stand on their own two feet, you know, that was still my perspective because I know a lot of people, like when you start working with people one-on-one, you can see the difference in mindset thinking and how, um, you know, a lot of people really get stuck in this victim mindset and they just can't get out of it because when they're on the receiving end of support, when they're on the receiving end of, you know, getting things like, for example, I've been on food stamps, I've been on WIC, I've been bankrupt, I've been all of those things. So um, I don't, I don't say any of this lightly, like that, that support shouldn't be there because I have used it before as well. Um, I never used it with the intention of, you know, staying on it. I always wanted to try to figure out a way to not be in that position anymore and to outwork my own limitations. You know, I had put myself in that position. Choices that I made along the way were my fault. And uh, they had me, you know, in a place where I needed help. So I accepted the help and then I chose to get to work to get out of it. You know, now as a single mom being fully financially responsible for my kids, it just, I just don't like to see people let excuses get in the way. I don't like that. I like you to be resourceful and come out of it and see that you can really work for yourself and provide something amazing that you can be proud of for you and your kids. Oh my gosh. That is just like giving me the goosebumps and chills to hear you talk about that that way. And you said that was my fault. So you, you own your life. you own your choices and where you're at today. And not everybody out there is able to do that. How did you get to a point to where you, did you grow up with that kind of mindset or just taking ownership of your life? Or was that something that you had to learn? Um, Well, definitely something I learned along the way, you know, uh, basically, um, you know, the backstory on that is everything growing up and going to school, I was like a perfectionist straight A student type of hard worker. So always, yes, I had that kind of uh, pressure slash mindset for myself. However, you know, growing up and dealing with self-esteem issues and eating disorders and somewhere along the way, getting lost in all that and really starting to 
compare myself to people I went to school with and just really make stuff up in my own head. So I, I just, I know how powerful your mind and your thoughts can be because I've let the dark, dark thoughts take over my life. And then I've learned to let the bright ones now lead the way. But, you know, back then when I was in a space of not loving myself, you know, eating disorders, um, I used to cut myself. I started moving into the world of drug abuse. And so that's kind of the path that I took and the choices that I made that really put me in a situation I wasn't supposed to be in. And I say supposed to because it's not like the path that I saw for my life, but it was the choices that I was making that took me there. Fast forward to answer your question is I basically have done a lot of work on um, overcoming shame and in, in my practice to help women and people overcome their shame to own and tap into my, my own uh, choices that I was ashamed of that were holding me back. And so really owning the shame in my game, owning the shame and the choices that I've made have really set me quite free. And to help other people do the same thing, because I think that a lot of people are hiding around shame and they're not acknowledging it because they feel like they might be alone. They might feel unworthy because of choices they've made in the past, you know, and affecting them. And I mean, this was like 20 years ago that I was abusing crystal meth and thought doesn't even cross my mind to pick up something like that, like a habit like that. I'm not even that same person, but I'm grateful that I had those experiences because I mean, it brought me my son. It taught me how to dig myself up out of rock bottom, you know, and it just, it gave me a lot of skills that now I'm able to not only first and foremost share with my children, but to share with the the world. Mm, I love that so much. I love the place, the empowering place that you come from. And uh, is there something that happened that led you, you think down to that path of, you know, the eating disorders and cutting yourself or was there just a sense of this shame and, and that type of feeling that you feel you've always had? Um, no, I think it all just stemmed mostly just like from comparison, you know, and uh, fortunately back then there wasn't things like social media and things that like my kids personally are growing up with and eventually everyone else's. It just was me looking at person A, B, or C and thinking they had something better than me. You know, I was already in a popular crowd. Like I was, I was in, like I was a cheerleader. I was a writer. I was on all the teams, whatever. Um, But I still didn't really see myself that way. I still, for some reason, had a very melancholy, dark side of me that was going on internally. And um, I used to, it's a comparison that, you know, people our age will know, but Winnie the Pooh is not really a cartoon that like our kids watch or familiar with, but um, there is a character Eeyore and I used to really identify with Eeyore, like so much so that I would like collect the figurines and wear the t-shirt and like, you know, that's kind of just a parallel to how my personality was internally. I mean, externally, people didn't know that I was friendly and outgoing, but internally those battles were happening. So that's, that's what was leading me to eating disorders and the cutting because those were a way to kind of feel the pain that I wasn't willing to show other people at the time. Oh my gosh. That's, that's so interesting. I I went through an Eeyore phase when I was a child too, and I never thought about it that way, but I could see for myself too, like why he resonated with me and never thought about that way. I also went through a Tigger phase though too. So I think there was that maybe could totally be that place I was identifying with and the place you want to be because Tigger's always happy and jumping and mm-hmm. all of the things. So, um, wow, that's so incredibly powerful. And talk a little bit more on the shame because I don't know that people really understand shame and how powerful it is, especially if they're not really into the personal growth, you know, really taking a look at, at themselves. Yeah. So this is something that I kind of unlocked within myself. Um, I'd say maybe two years ago because I had never talked about my drug use before and I've been an entrepreneur for, well, forever, my whole life really, but a successful one for the past about seven and a half years or so. And as my business grew and grew, that was amazing. But then it started to decline. And I realized I was kind of losing a connection with people. It felt like the missing link was 
people saw my, my glory, but they didn't see my whole story. And I mean, they've seen parts of it. People who have been following me for years know that I went through a really crazy divorce. In my life, the past few years has been absolutely crazy. Like I, I got to write my book. I got to get it done because it's that, it's that nuts. But, um, you know, when you come out and you're on social media, even though I try to share a lot of aspects of all of the hard things that I go through, because it's important to share with you and everyone, um, they were only seeing the success. You know, it's all that people even notice, even though I'm talking about the other things, they notice the success. So I really need, decided, okay, I knew what was standing in my way of my next breakthrough. And that was, I needed to share this story that, you know, 20 years ago, I was a drug user. And it just, it didn't seem relatable because you don't look at me and you don't think of me as a drug user. I don't fit, I don't fit the part, but I was the part. And so when I realized that I had shame around that story, that that was holding me back and that was causing a decline in my business, I realized that that was the one and only thing I really needed to start tapping into and helping other women do the same. And as soon as I released that information and started talking about it, um, and speaking at empowerment retreats about it, I, I knew that I had literally tapped into something that a lot of people need to do. It was the one thing that I had been like trying to outwork, trying to outshine. It was the shame in those decisions and the situations that I was in. And like, just, it just grosses me out to think about the positions that I had put myself in. But, um, I had been now spending the past 20 years trying to outwork that, that story, that life that I had created for myself. And so um, acknowledging it, talking about it, bringing light to it and letting people know like, Hey guys, I have come from rock bottom. So just because you see what I've created, it doesn't mean that it's always been this way for me. It just means like I've worked really, really hard um, to get myself where I've been. Yeah, absolutely. There is so much power in our stories in sharing our stories when we can get to that place of uh, vulnerability. And there is so many people walking around who have those stories, and they're scared to share them. And it keeps them in that it keeps them in a dark place while they may have come up and out, there's still a darkness around them. And, um, you know, that's one thing I really love about bringing women on my podcast is because there's that power in their stories and it gives permission for other women to speak up and speak out and be like, Hey, that's me too. Or just to know, like, you mean, I'm not the only one who has experienced that or gone through that or felt that way. Like I'm not the only one who's ever, you know, been a drug user and put my place, my myself in these situations or cut myself or whatever. And the more we talk about it, I think it's one of the things that the world could use the most of right now is that open communication and knowing they're safe. They're okay. Yep, for sure. Because it doesn't define who you are. I mean, I could have chose to stay in that world. It would have been easy. (laughs) You know, it is a lot of work to get out of um, addiction. As you know, you've done the work to get out of it yourself. So, you know, it's, it's easy to stay in it. It's hard to do the work to, to remove yourself and get clean and do all that stuff. Yeah. What was the point for you that brought you out of your addiction? I got pregnant. (laughs) Yep. That's it. I mean, I got pregnant. And so, um, that pregnancy, I got sober as soon as I found out I was pregnant and I've never considered going back ever since. That's so awesome. That's so cool. That's like the greatest gift to yourself and to your son and the people around you. And, you know, that's not the true story for everybody that that's what happens, but that's incredibly powerful. So I appreciate you sharing that. Yeah, for sure. I mean, he saved my life. I tell him that all the time. It's so, so awesome. So what are you working on now and moving forward? I mean, right now in 2020, obviously we're in a very crazy time. Um, first, actually share a little bit about that. How how are you doing in this time with everything that's coming up? Um, yeah, so 2020 has been a rock your world kind of year already, you know, mine as well. Um, I'm newly single again out of a very long-term relationship. So uh, my year started off with that. And then with the quarantine and um, just a lot, a lot of heavy stuff coming down, not only in my personal world, but collectively as a community. 
Um, so what I have been trying to do and what I've been working on is just what I always do. And that's just bringing light, bringing positivity and hope and keeping it real that there are still like the struggle is real. It's not just a catchy cliche that we like to say about funny things. And that's, that's all well and good because we want to keep things light where we can, but the struggle is actually real right now. Um, we are not meant to be divided and that's what's going on right now. So, um, you know, just some tips that I always talk about, but really apply right now is um, your daily routine, your daily habits. While they may not be a schedule, for example, I don't set an alarm for any reason at all right now. There, I have no reason to set an alarm unless I'm taking someone's virtual workout class that I want to make sure I'm on there for. But it's like, I feel like the clock is just a 24 hours constant thing where I take like naps in clusters and I work in clusters and day and night, night and day are like, interchangeable right now. So when I say your morning routine, I just mean like, it doesn't have to be rigid, but some things you really want to do. And what I've always done and recommended first and foremost is get ready for your day. So I have always, since even before social media, I get up, I put on my makeup and do my hair and like shower, do the whole thing. That's just always been a part of me because I feel like it really sets your day up for success. And for those of us in quarantine, um, I feel like it's still that much more important because it is so easy to just let yourself go in times like this. This is the time where all things lead to chaos, Murphy's law, and we need to really bring it in where we can. So get ready every day. It doesn't have to be to the nines. I don't have hardly as much makeup on as I normally wear, but definitely, you know, my eyebrows, of course, (laughs) Um, something as small as opening the blinds you know, get ready, open the blinds, make your bed every day. I like I'm sitting in my bed right now, but my bed is made like I work between my um, downstairs office or my bed. And I want to make sure that my, my day is set up in the proper way. So definitely start with that. And movement, there is no better time right now than to try all sorts of fitness things that you may like. There's so many, um, amazing instructors out there offering their talents to you really for free. Most of them aren't even asking for donations at this point. Um, so I can't wait to actually get to their classes live and gift them gift cards and stuff for, you know, blessing us with their, with their information and their talents and moving our bodies. Um, I have a hula hoop that I've been using every day, like just get creative in ways to move your body. If you guys have kids, just play games, we're all homeschooling now. And the only subject I care about is PE and nutrition. Like, honestly, <laughs> just keeping <laughs> my kids moving. I don't care. Like I just, some, I see some women beating themselves up over the structure of homeschool. Mm-hmm. And let's just be honest, you guys, like for the high schoolers, they're already, they know what to do. You don't really have to help them that much. My daughter who's 10, I'm not even helping her all that much because if it's going to cause a huge amount of stress between the two of us, I'm just going to let it go. Her grades that she gets in fifth grade during the last two months of school where the world was on lockdown are not going to affect her long-term. But what is going to affect her long-term is how we handled the stress of the moment, how we engaged with each other while we were here. I mean, I'm able to play with her now more than ever. Even though I work from home, she would always be like, hey, let's go play catch. Let's go play kickball. And I'd be saying, no, I don't have time because I was too busy working. Now she's annoyed by me telling her, Hey, let's go on a bike ride because, you know, I just, I'm really trying to embrace having her home. So, you know, that's just some of my advice to you guys is let a lot of this go, let your structure be less rigid, but some of your non-negotiables get a little bit higher to the top of your list. Just like, you know, engaging with your family. Um, if you're blessed and they're home with you, like really, really embrace that. When my kids are at their dad's, it's like the worst ever. It's that's when I have to really go to work to change my state of mind and, you know, stay positive so that I don't go into a dark hole because I'm human, even though I have a lot of skills, I'm still human and I still feel the weight of the world in all of this, just like all of you guys do. I love that you shared that so much because I too am watching mom stress out during this time about being homeschool. First, I'm not calling myself a homeschool parent because homeschooling looks very different from what we all think it does. And um, I'm not the teacher. I am not a teacher in that sense. And I don't want to be so I'm not trying to be. 
And for me, I'm, I'm blessed with my kids are pretty self-sufficient. The older, you know, they're all older, the ones that are in school. And so they know what to do. And I'm not keeping a rigid schedule. I've got a few requirements, this much reading, this much writing, you know, but that's about it. And um, our school is going to be providing some more, um, adva- they're going to start teaching them again here, you know, distance learning, because we just got the announcement yesterday that we're closed down for the rest of the year. So, oh, wow. Um, yeah, we got that a while ago. <laughs> yeah, we've been kind of delayed here in our state. So it's it's been interesting. But, you know, not to stress out about it, because you're, you're right, two months of not being in school is not going to be detrimental to their learning or to their future. And how can we embrace this time? How can we show up differently? I mean, I asked my daughter this morning, like, how are you feeling about school being closed down? And she said, well, I'm kind of sad because I'm going to miss being at school and and my friends, but I'm, I'm happy because I get to be with my family more. And that was just like, oh my goodness, you know, and so true. And my son, he's, doesn't like school right now anyway, so he's okay with it. (laughs) You know, we don't, we don't have to go into this, in this place of suffering Mm -hmm. and angst and worry and anxiety. Is it a time that is so unknown that it can bring up those feelings? Absolutely. But we don't have to, we don't have to live there. Yep. 100%. This is an opportunity that we can teach our kids how to thrive in crisis. I mean, and maybe, maybe we're not all thriving in crisis. Like that's okay. Maybe you're just in survival mode or maybe you're just staying alive right now. But, um, this is your chance you get to show your kids. I hate that. I'm such a prime example for my own children, but I love that I've been able to teach them along the way, how to handle crisis Mm -hmm. because problems are going to happen. This isn't the first or or last time any of our kids are going to be in a crisis that's out of their control. And so we get to teach them. Here's how. I recommend you handle a crisis and you get to show them by example. Yeah, I think this has come up a lot and tell me what you think about this, but I think people do struggle a lot right now because it is out of our control. And you and I, with our backgrounds, understand that lack of control that we truly have and trying to be in control. And life is a lot simpler when we understand it's not, it's not in our hands. And, um, when you come from a pace, place of being able to surrender to that, then life can be a lot more peaceful, a lot more fun. But I think so many people, it's the lack of control that's really bringing up a lot of fear. Yes, absolutely. So just bring it into something small, like what you can, can control is, you know, writing down 10 gratitudes every day. What you can control is what you're making for breakfast in your house. What you can control is how much access to junk food you're willing to give not only yourself, but to your kids, you know, like it's so easy to just start going down a spiral. And now more than ever, we need to just really control how we're moving our body, how we're fueling our mind, how we're spreading love. Um, And I also think high on the list of priorities is how we're showing up for a virtual community because we can't be together in person. And um, we are going to start to see a really big emotional effect on mental health for people just simply because we can't be together. So I definitely think um, you can control either building a virtual community or putting yourself out there to be in one. Um, You know, I know a lot of people are scared to put themselves out there and just like click the link to join some random happy hours in, but do it, (laughs) just do it, (laughs) show up and it will be so life-saving for you and anyone else out there, you know? So those are some small things we can control. And that's, that's it. We can only control what's happening literally within our home right now, nothing else. So, you know, that's okay. Just take it down to the basics. Enjoy this time. Like put a Maui background on your zoom calls. And, um, I kind of like to think of it as I know a lot of people who wish they could spend money and go on a retreat, but they don't have time. They just, they can't get the time to go on a retreat. Well, you can do this at home. You know, I see my friend Brooke, she is so funny and she is doing like spa days in her house and calling it lay master bedroom spa and making dinner in lay kitchen couture or whatever, like just make the best of it and call like, take this time to retreat, take this time to get mentally well and stable and enjoy your family and cook random things with whatever random ingredients you have left in your pantry right now. 
I feel like, oh my gosh, what am I even eating at times? But <laughs> it's fine. It's all funny. And it's all what I can control right now. Yeah. It's a great time to clean out your pantry. I mean, you know, get all the ingredients that you haven't used in a while and yeah. Clean out. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So what are you working on for yourself right now? What are you growing through at this point in time? Um, so basically what I'm um, doing is I'm about to come up or launch a, just like a mindful anxiousness program for people. Um, I'm going to be doing it for free slash donations based for something that I would typically charge for, but I just want to really be holding space for people right now, emotionally, like with their mindset, since I have um, a lot of skills in that. And I'm so gracious to, like I said, the fitness instructors. I see fitness instructors donating a lot of time and energy. And of course, all of the workers everywhere, people are uniting everywhere. And I feel like this is where I can fit in and help contribute um, more on a mindset level. So that's kind of what I'm working on right now. My big picture stuff is kind of just at the wayside at the moment. And I'm working on how I can serve people right now who really need it over the next month until hopefully the communities start opening up again. And yeah, so that's my big focus right now. And I am still working on part of my book. There's a lot of time to get focused and write a lot of good content. (laughs) (laughs) I love that you're writing a book. Um, I think every one of us has one in us. I know I do. I've been saying it for years, but now is a great time to sit down and, and focus on that and do that and to sit down and focus and do the things that you've been putting off or been wanting to do or to dive into things like the, the opportunity that you're providing. I mean, now is when um, a lot of our defects can show up or glaring things that maybe we um, have been avoiding and not wanting to work on. So I love that you're providing something like that just to help to, to be of service. I mean, such a beautiful time to be of service and to bring community together. Uh, I think that we need more of that. And so I love that you're shining your light in that way. Is that what your sweater says? Shine bright. Oh, yes. Shine bright. I thought it said shine your light. <laughs> yep. Same thing. <laughs> yep. Yep. I love it. That's yeah. awesome. So where can people find you? Um, on Instagram, I'm Laura Muse official. And on my website is lauramuse.co and Facebook at Laura Muse. Love it. Is there anything else on your heart that you want to share with us? Um, I just want to encourage everyone to be strong right now and to, you know, really dig into the positive sides of what's going on. I know this is a really hard and dark time for a lot of people. It's hard to see clearly um, why this is important for our community, where God is in all of this, but just know that he is there and, you know, he does not waste pain. So everything is all going to be worked out for good as long as we hang in there and keep supporting each other and, um, you know, just we'll get through it. I love that. Such a beautiful and important message during this time. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing yourself with us and um, being so open and vulnerable about, you know, your past, where you've come from, where you're at now. And I am looking forward to seeing your, your program come out and make a difference in so many people's lives. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Hi, friends. If you enjoyed this episode of the Just As We Are podcast, it would mean so much to me if you would head on over to iTunes and leave me a five-star review. Take a screenshot of today's episode and tag me at Katrina Lelly on your social media. If you haven't already, head on over to the Just As We Are podcast community on Facebook and hit join where you will get to join more of the Just As We Are tribe. And remember... And no matter where you are on your journey, you are completely whole and loved just as you are.